When a GPCR couples to a G protein, the affinity for an agonist increases, but the molecular basis for this at the time we started the work was unclear. Here, the blue curve is the inactive state of the beta receptor, showing low affinity binding for the agonist monoterol. When a G protein is coupled, the affinity for monoterol is considerably higher, as shown by the green curve. But when a restin is coupled, the affinity is between the two. We determine four structures of the turkey beta receptor in the active state in complex with a conformational specific nanobody and bound to either cyanopindolol, salbutamol, dobutamine or isoprenaline. We had previously determined structures of the beta receptor in the inactive state with these same ligands, so we could do a direct structural comparison between the different states without any confounding ligand-specific complications. The structures showed that high affinity agonist binding in the beta receptor is due to a combination of factors, which may include an increase in the number of ligand receptor contacts, the number of hydrogen bonds, and an increase in the strength of both hydrogen bonds and van der Waals interactions. More recent work focused on the structure determination of the beta receptor in nanodiscs coupled to arrestin. The 3.3 angstrom resolution cryo-EM structure identifies the GPCR arrestin interface formed by the finger loop of arrestin, which differs in conformation from that observed in arrestin coupled to rhodopsin. There are also subtle differences in the orthosteric binding site compared to the nanobody bound structures determined by X ray crystallography. I will discuss these differences and their possible role in biosignaling, and also why the affinity of agonist is lower when arrestin is coupled compared to a G protein. I'd like to thank everybody in the lab who performed the work, my collaborators, my funders, and also all the facilities where we collected data.